All right, so good evening, everybody, and thank you for joining. So, welcome to another Meaningful Monday. This is the one for September. I do appreciate you guys making the time uh, to be here tonight. So, in, just to let you know, the next one is on the Monday, the 2nd of October. It is a public holiday. So, if anyone would prefer not to have it on the public holiday, please just let me know and I can move it to another night like Tuesday. Um, I'm, I might send an email out like that, but if you can tell me tonight, if you don't mind the public holiday, then we just carry on in the public holiday. It's um, at eight o'clock at night. So it's really up to you guys. Um, so this Meaningful Mondays is really helping you to create the life of your own design. And I think that's the foundation because we need to acknowledge that we do, in fact, create our own reality. We do create the life that we are living. So we're not victims. We are powerful, powerful creators. And the more we come to acknowledge and to know that we, we create our experience with our thoughts and with our feelings, um, this is really a good way to get us started in changing all areas of our life that we want to change. So just a big welcome, because I've got a lot of Silver Method graduates on the call uh, tonight. So you guys will really um, resonate with this quite well already. Okay, so tonight's subject that we're going to be talking about is the subject of self-sabotage. And I'd like to start off by saying that don't for a minute think that anyone you know, including yourself, are excluded Everyone on this planet self-sabotages at some point or another, in some way or another. We all do it. Everybody does it. So what we need to really focus on, which we're going to do tonight, is how do we do it? In other words, how do we self-sabotage? How do we know we're doing it? We're going to look at what are the signs, because there's all kinds of things that we do that are sneaky little signs. So we need to know what those are so we can identify those are now self-sabotaging mechanisms. And then the most important thing, I guess, is how do we stop it? How do we stop self-sabotaging? Because until we stop it, we can't really create what we want. Um, so I'm going to give you some techniques to understand what you can do in your life to change that and to become aware. Awareness is the first step to change that when you do self-sabotage, you've got some techniques that you can use. Okay, so when it comes to how do we self-sabotage, I just put this um, quote there because it applies to the first one. People with low self-esteem are more likely to sabotage themselves when something's good, when something good happens. So we don't self-sabotage when things are going, you know, where they've always been when things start to get better in our lives and suddenly we make more money or we're more happy or we get more love or something like that that's when we self-sabotage or we lose weight we lose two kilos and we on our way there then we self-sabotage so um what's a big surprise for many people is that there is many people alive with a fear of success as there are people alive with the fear of failure. And that's really interesting. And it's a pity that it's that way because all the things that you know you could have had or done or been are just become missed opportunities because we have some of these particular behaviors. The first one is lack of self-worth. The other one is a perfectionist nature. The third one is what I call living in the know. Living in the land of the know or living like Dr. No, whichever way you want to call it. Basically what it means is you shake your head when everyone's trying to help you or you get an idea. So you just say no. You're the person who, if you know anyone in your life who answers no more than yes, that's what it means when I say living in the no. And then last but not least, probably the worst is procrastination. So what we have to do is we have to get rid of these ugly monsters once and for all, become aware and know how to change them. Now, there are many reasons why people fear being successful, but the most important thing is to identify just for yourself, what are your reasons for not achieving? Or what are your reasons 
if you do fear success for fearing success because once you're able to identify the reasons then what we can do is we can become very mindful about them very aware of them and once we become aware you'll have techniques and abilities to override them because we've got to start getting rid of them like i call them i call it annihilating the monsters okay and once we start doing that it will help us to actually transform the fear into action where we begin to break new ground confidently and i do say the word fear you may not think self-sabotage is fear but all of self-sabotage stems from fear and i'll explain it later on talking about the paradigm that it is a fear even if you don't recognize it on a conscious level there's a deep underlying fear and the fear is a fear of change the fear of change causes us to self-sabotage so now let's have a look at what are the signs so those are the main things how we self-sabotage but what are the signs which we can become aware of because most of the time these signs are busy screaming out at us but um we just you know lending them a deaf ear so the first one is you don't um you don't put what you know into action i always say the biggest gap in the world is the gap between that that we know we should be doing and that that we actually doing so when we're trying to become more successful the things that we want to do and we know we should be doing them it might be making that phone call going to a networking event i don't know let's say it's um cold calling um if it's to lose weight perhaps to take different behaviors we all know what we should be doing but we don't do it another sign is you settle for less pay than you're worth and we don't get out of that situation we just stay there knowing that we're worth more or you're in a job that's not suited for you or doesn't use your talents wisely i've been in that situation myself and you've got to start making a choice either you're going to change the jobs or you're going to find another role within the company or you're going to leave or you're going to learn new skills something has to change but you stay in a job that's not suited for you breaks down your self-confidence and makes you unhappy and to stay in that's unhealthy or becoming a people pleaser instead of a self pleaser please understand when i say self pleaser many people have a negative con connotation around self pleasing or the term selfish the truth is we have to look after ourselves first before we can be valuable enough to look after anybody else if you're always giving and never giving to yourself you become like an empty cup if you took a cup of water and kept emptying it out everywhere you, your cup would be empty eventually whereas if you fill yourself with self improvement or things that you enjoy or make sure that you look what you are looked after you're looking after your health you're looking after your well-being you are looking after your happiness your cup gets fuller and fuller and fuller and then it overflows to other people and you share and give that that you have and that's where we need to come from um even in the bible it says love one love others as you love yourself there's even instruction there to, as you love yourself you are instructed to love yourself so self pleasing is not is not a negative thing at all We've got to look after ourselves another sign of self sabotage is never finishing what you start or you have poor boundaries with others at home or at work you feel that you know you've been taken advantage of but you don't say anything or you keep saying yes to things where you're not comfortable with them or maybe you overextend yourself but to no real avail or you have low self esteem no matter how hard you try these are is also a sign of self sabotage or lastly setting for mediocrity so these are signs here but if you look at these all of these can really be chunked up back into those first four categories that are put up earlier which is feeling that you unworthy being a perfectionist living in the know or procrastination so now we're going to go through these one by one the first one is unworthiness so unworthiness basically is a demeaning self-imposed belief 
of not deserving effort, attention, or respect. Underline the word belief because you've got to acknowledge that if you have a low self-worth, it's a self-imposed belief. That's all it is. And we can change our beliefs. That's the good news. We can change our beliefs. And I'm going to talk about that in this presentation, how you can do that, change your belief and become a person of higher self-worth. I love this quote by Wayne Dyer. Feeling unworthy is like putting a huge obstacle into the God force, into the life force, which is everywhere. And what that means is the way we create anything in our life is co-creation with God or co-creation with source energy or co-creation with life force, whatever you want to call it. But we, we, we don't really exist without life force, without it flowing through us, different between a living person and a dying person. So this life force is everywhere and it's part of what we do when we create our circumstances. So all good and all well-being is basically the order of the day. Our well-being and good only stops when we interfere with it. So when we feel unworthy, that's an example of interfering with it. Same as being ill. Well-being is the order of the day. When we have negative emotions, we're feeling uneasy emotionally, we block the well-being and we get sick. So it's always us, our feelings and our beliefs that are interfering with well-being or happiness, whatever it may be. So unworthiness is very, very dangerous and it's something that we do need to work on. And a person who's feeling unworthy, whether it's consciously or unconsciously, is actually going around projecting this incorrect or erroneous notion of having little value or little merit out into the world at large when they're going around. And the truth is whatever we project outwards is what we're going to get back. And this is very disheartening because everyone, every single person has tremendous worth, enormous value and purpose. There's a purpose for everybody to be here. So we need to find that worth, that value and that purpose within ourselves. But we need to really work on low self-worth if that's how you're feeling or that's you. So what you must do to identify the most obvious areas where you don't feel good enough, where is it? Ask yourself, is it about my talents, about my gifts, about my looks, about my skill level, my education? Where is it that you don't feel good enough? And then we've got to conquer that. We've got to overcome that. And as you make a conscious effort to overcome this, and I'll show you some techniques in this presentation, over time, you're going to get better and better over time, and you'll feel more good about yourself. You'll feel better about yourself, and that will just increase as long as you keep working on yourself. I'm not saying it's a quick fix. It might take a little time. But the longer you stay on the course, the greater your self-worth will become, and it really is absolutely worth it. So don't ever give up. The second one is perfectionism. Many people think being a perfectionist is a good thing. Perfectionist, being a perfectionist can be a damaging thing. It stops you from achieving greater things in your life, slowing you down, sometimes never ever doing something ever because it's never perfect. I'm just put this um, quick picture up there. The difference between a perfectionist and an optimalist. So a perfectionist sees a journey as a straight line. This is how it's got to be. This is where I am. This is where I want to go. It's got to go this way. But we know life is not like that. A journey, we know, is irregular. It's not linear. It can be meandering. It can be a spiral. You, there's cycles in life. You feel good. You feel bad. Good things happen. Bad things happen. We just pick up and we carry on. It's a journey that's not a straight line. Perfectionists also have a fear of failure. The right mindset to have is not being afraid of failure. We need to learn from our failure. Failure is feedback. Failure is saying to you, you're on your way to your goal, but what you're doing or what you think or what you're feeling is not correct. Then it comes an element of failure. So all it is is, well, what do I change and what do I learn? And we keep going. Or to focus on the destination. I've got to have it that way. That's all it's got to be. Just focus on the destination is another perfectionist mindset where actually life is a journey. You've got to enjoy every minute of it. Like some people just want the big success. They don't want to put in the hard yards. They don't want to put in the work. Or like even between where you are today, let's say you want to get a degree or you want to have an increase or you want to reduce your weight. 
there's a time between where you are and where you're going to get to. That journey in between, we shouldn't resist it. We should embrace it. Make it part of the journey and enjoy the journey. So enjoy the journey and focusing on the destination. Also, the all or nothing approach. It can't be all or nothing. We've got to understand that there are nuances in life, that things change and we've got to be open. The same as being defensive. We've got to be open to suggestions, to new ideas, to other people, to different places, different events, things changing. Also, perfectionists often are very critical type people. They're they fault finders. That's just a thought pattern, a habitual way of thinking. If you're aware of it, maybe if you do that, maybe you don't, but if you do, what you can do is become aware and just become a benefit finder, trying to find the good in things. Whenever something happens, good or bad, you just say that's good and try and find a reason why that's good. So not being too harsh, trying to be forgiving. Um, if people are harsh, if they... If something's wrong and they're rigid about it, they won't change about it, they're not prepared to be adaptable or dynamic, they're going to get stuck. So perfectionist nature is very dangerous because it actually makes people unhappy. It says that perfectionist is self-abuse of the highest order. Wow, that's, that's quite extreme. But the truth is, when anyone refuses to accept any standard short of perfectionism, the truth is you're going to be on a very unsatisfying ride in your life. Your journey is going to be unsatisfying and unhappy because nothing's ever going to measure up to your standard. With a standard like a perfectionist, nothing is ever good enough. Not your work, not what you own, not your friends, not your loved ones, not your family. Nothing measures up. And that's really an unhappy way to live. So if this is you, what you need to do is set and create a gradient scale where you start telling yourself, you know what? Anything between good and perfect is acceptable. Even if it's just good, not even very good, from good to perfect, start saying it's acceptable. And this is the only way that you can make yourself experience all the beauty in life, the good in life, the joy, um, and just everything that you experience is going to be a happy experience for you when your standard is not right up there, which is perfect and often impossible. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that um, a desire to be perfect doesn't have its place. It does have a place in life. It can lead to great achievements. But the problem for most perfectionists is that they desire to see perfect in things that are most valuable in life, like people, and love because when it comes to people and love the truth is no matter what we think those are already perfect just as they are what we need to do is be accepting of everybody as they are it's like an unconditional love an unconditional acceptance of people allowing them to be where they are at their point in their own life journey allow them to be and behave just as they are behaving without trying to change them. Because if you want to change them, we, then we love them conditionally. And the truth is people in love are perfect as they are. So as a perfectionist, yes, when it comes to work and jobs and things, we need to also have a gradient scale of acceptance. But when it comes to people in love, those we need to understand are already perfect just the way they are. Maybe they're not perfect in our eyes, but that's a perception. It doesn't mean that they're not perfect. They are perfect as they are. And they also are on a journey to try and get things to be better and better in their own life. So the next one is living in the know. This is like a person, if you ever know someone, at the moment you begin to share an idea with them or share a solution maybe that can help them in their life, they're already shaking their head. I don't know if you can see me, but um, they're shaking their head. They're really saying no. You try to offer them options. They'll tell you why the option won't work. You give them another option. They'll tell you they've done that. No matter what you try and say to them, they will find something wrong. So that's what it means living in the no. And the truth is living in the no is no fun. So 
if you can relate to this, then you need to come up with a new way to communicate and a new way to problem solve. So here's just a quick three little points. Instead of seeing roadblocks, what's wrong? This is wrong. That is wrong. These are all the roadblocks. Think of options. So even when you're talking about the roadblocks that have appeared in your life, instead of focusing on the roadblocks and talking about them, go into option mode and try and get as many options as you can. Once you've got a list of options, you can then pick one. What's the best out of these six options, for example? Instead of focusing on shut doors, think of the possibilities. Sometimes people have been made redundant and it's a terrible experience. On the other hand, there's a blessing in disguise there. It suddenly gives you a whole lot of possibilities to start thinking out the box. You can think of, what can I do now? And anything is a possibility. So when one door shuts, it's sometimes a blessing in disguise. It can give you options to do um, something else that you might have wanted to do or that a part of you has really been yearning to do for a long time. Also, instead of focusing on impossibilities or using the word, oh, that's impossible, that's impossible, just start thinking about maybe, maybe I can do this and say the word can. So think of can, think of maybe instead of thinking of possibilities. Then the last one is procrastination. This is probably a big one for everybody. I suffer from it too. I'm always working on my procrastination. So to procrastinate is just to put off doing something that we know we need to do. And the truth is, the problem with procrastination is most of the best opportunities for us are missed just because we procrastinate. And that's really a waste because life is short. The clock keeps ticking and opportunities come and sometimes they don't come around a second time. So we need to act. And I'll say this, sometimes when it comes to procrastination, what we really need to do is just take one more step or just to complete something or, or to do something, just to get something just right, just take sometimes one more step. There's a quote that I love. It's a, a person named Ida Scott Taylor. And it says, procrastination usually results in sorrowful regret. And that's not a nice way to live, to have regret. It's really a negative emotion that drains your energy and is not healthy. It says, today's duties put off until tomorrow give us a double burden to bear. The best way is to do them in their proper time. So my advice is, you know, to begin your breakthrough with procrastination, just take one small step at a time. Just take one tiny small step, whether it's one hour a day towards something that you want to do, or even 30 minutes a day. But just start. If it's that book that you want to write, just write the first paragraph. If it's um, a holiday that you want to go on, just research one place. If it's a house you want to buy, look on the internet for just at least one property, but take one step. Just do one thing to take you forward. Okay, so how do we stop self-sabotage? I think this is the most important thing, is to understand it, have an awareness of how we create it or how it happens in our lives, because with awareness, we can start to change things. So the first very important step is understanding. So some of you have, may have seen me teach this stick man before, but I'm going to put it up again because you can never see this enough times. And for me in my own life, it's been most helpful. So this is just a little diagram of a stick man. It comes from a Dr. Thurman Fleet. It will help to understand how the mind works. So the size of the brain or the mind there relative to the body is quite accurate. The mind controls everything, controls our body. So the conscious mind is what we do when we have thoughts, we analytically think about things. That's when you say, oh, I want to reduce five kilos of weight or I want to start a new business or I want to increase my sales or I want to have a better relationship. This is where the conscious mind has the, this idea. Now the subconscious mind is where all your habits and beliefs reside. Also, that unworthy feeling, that self-image, your self-worth or your confidence, all lies in your subconscious mind. Now the truth is, your subconscious mind controls 
90% of all your behaviors. So the B there is for behaviors or for the body. Because let's be honest, our behaviors are taken care of through our body. So the subconscious mind controls the body and our behaviors, and all our behaviors give us our results. So just that you're aware that number is 90%. This is neuroscience, not my opinion. All our behaviors and our actions are 90% on autopilot. So when we think about self-sabotage, this is going to probably help you. Your subconscious programming is called your paradigm. And the paradigm is basically a program that controls all your habitual behavior. And almost all of your behavior, as I said, 90% is habitual. So this paradigm, if it was a certain one, how you are right now, let's call it your X paradigm. You have an X paradigm, it's who you are today as you are. So let's say it's before you want change. So maybe you want to reduce weight, you want to increase love, you want to increase your income, you want to change your job, you want to buy a new house, you want to buy a new car, anything that you want to change. That's a different thing. Today, as you are with what you've got is your X paradigm. Your X paradigm is going to cause you to have X type behaviors. Your X type behaviors are giving you X type results. So the results you have today, your X results, are a result of your paradigm. So if you're thinking thoughts in harmony with your paradigm, X thoughts, you're in your comfort zone. You feel fine. You feel relaxed. You, you enjoy it. You feel in harmony. However, if you have a why thought pop into your conscious mind, oh, I want to be 10 kilos lighter. I want to have a more loving relationship. I want to earn more money. I want to earn another $50,000 a year. I want to have a better job. I want to find a life partner, whatever it may be. That new idea is a why idea. It's different to your current paradigm. The minute you have a why idea, it's out of harmony with your paradigm. When it's out of harmony with your paradigm, whether you want this or not, this is what's going to happen. You're going to start having thoughts of doubt and indecision. They're going to lead to emotions of fear, they're gonna be expressed through the body in a feeling, an underlying feeling of anxiety, and you're going to wanna to take a step in the direction of your why idea, and you're gonna hit some form of terror barrier and bounce back into your comfort zone and not take that step forward. So as you wanna take that step, it's the idea of the why is out of harmony with our conditioning, it creates doubt, Indecision, fear, expressed as anxiety through the body. So how do we change this? Well, you can try to change it with conscious thought, effort, and willpower, and good luck there. If it was so easy, everyone would be skinny. Everyone would have the perfect life partner. We'd all be millionaires. We all have our perfect life purpose, all sorted. It's not that easy with our conscious mind, effort, and willpower. The best way to address what you want to create the why idea as a reality in your results is to reprogram the subconscious mind. So instead of working on the conscious mind, effort and willpower, work on the subconscious mind. So there the paradigm's got a big why in it. What that means is you've got to basically visualize daily, meditate, use dynamic meditation, visualize, and all the people on the call here who are Silver Method graduates, you'll get this. This is like doing mirror of the mind technique. You're going to see yourself in your mirror of the mind, doing that that you want to do, being that that you want to be, having that that you want to have, repeatedly making impressions in the subconscious mind. You make the why bigger and bigger and bigger. Now, when you have thoughts of the why in the conscious mind, they're in harmony with the why that's now in your subconscious programming. You've put some why in there. You've still got an X but there's some more wine there. Your behaviors are more inclined to be taking steps towards that why and giving you results. The only way to really get them is to, you're still gonna have an element of underlying fear. You're still gonna have an element of anxiety because you, you got a mixed X, Y 
um, thing going on, you're still going to have the element of anxiety, as I said, but you have understanding that even though this is happening, you've got to take the step, and that's when you crash through the terror barrier, and the other side is freedom. When you take that step, so that step is continue with the right behaviors to reduce your weight. You see yourself lose two to three kilos. You start feeling, even though you think you want that, a part of you wants to keep you where you are. That's your old paradigm. Or you want to call these extra 10 clients. You call two and then you self-sabotage yourself. Or you want to have a better relationship. As things are getting better, you, a fight happens and you go back to where you used to be. Whatever we do to self-sabotage, it's because we bounce off the terror barrier. You've got to keep going through the terror barrier, taking those actions with the awareness. I've got to act differently. But it's easier to act differently if you have a why in that subconscious paradigm. If you visualize and you put the why there, it's easier for your behaviors to be a why. And it's easier for more of your results to be a why. And every time you're taking that step, you are crashing through your previous terror barrier. So what happens over time, the more you do these behaviors repeatedly, the bigger the why becomes, so your dream starts coming a reality, and the smaller the X, the old paradigm becomes. And eventually, you become a person with Y results, permanent Y behaviors, and you have basically grown. This is, the, this is coming out your comfort zone, which is uncomfortable. Every time you go through the, out of your comfort zone, you're basically going through the terror barrier, out of your comfort zone, and stepping into your freedom. So there's an old um, saying by Abraham Maslow, which says you can either step forward into growth or back into safety. So the truth is, if we don't keep stepping forward, it's going to feel uncomfortable. Then we're actually stepping backwards and we're going backwards. So this applies to getting a better job or buying that house or starting your own business or increasing your sales or reducing weight. It's all the same principle. Here's a good example that you'll understand about weight loss. It says, if the conscious mind, that's the, that's the top of the mind that gets this why idea, and the idea is, ah, I've made a decision, I'm going to go on a diet. But your subconscious programming is, I'm overweight. That's where you are today. That's what it is. Where you, what you are today is a, is a result of your programming. So you are overweight. That's your paradigm. The top this is, I want to go on diet. Well, read what it says on the right-hand side. Your self-image, that's the paradigm, is a self-correcting mechanism. So when a person who is overweight goes on a diet without altering their self-image, any weight loss will be temporary. Because the self-image, being a self-correcting mechanism, measures the deviation from the set point and immediately corrects course. So the weight that was lost is found. That's self-sabotage. And this is just an example on weight. I'm just going to wait to see the internet connection. Is a bit strange. This is just an example on weight. It applies for job, money, relationships, um, spirituality, happiness, whatever it may be. It's all the same thing. Because... Your paradigm wants to keep you in your comfort zone. It does not want to change. So this is really good that, you were, that you've been on this um, call and you've seen this because now you have the awareness. Awareness is the first step to change. Just knowing this helps you understand that you've got to take this step anyway. So there's two ways to change. The first inside ourselves on the inside world in our mind we have to reprogram that subconscious mind changing that paradigm continuously creating a new belief even if it's about self-worth self-worth is a, a self-damaging belief that we hold we've got to change that belief how do we do that we visualize do mental rehearsal you've got to do it daily those of you who've done the silver method that are on this call you know what we're talking about you're using your mind dynamic meditation and you're reprogramming your subconscious mind constantly. That's in the inside world. The second thing you've got to do is you've got to take action in the outside world in harmony with what we want to achieve. 
So even though you're going to feel doubt, indecision, and anxiety, you've got to take that step. You've got to do it afraid. So I'll give you an example of myself. Uh, there was a time where I was trying to become perfect with a particular presentation on leadership, and I was preparing it and re-preparing it and changing it. And eventually someone, one of my mentors on the John Maxwell team said, Janine, preparation's overrated. You're going to take forever. You're never going to finish your presentation. Just do it. Take the presentation you've got as it is and just go and do it. But I said, ah, oh, but I'm, 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 a, I'm a bit scared because it's not. He said, do it afraid. Do it afraid. Go and present that thing and that's how you will learn. You'll go through the terror barrier. You'll get on the other side of the terror barrier. You'll correct, you'll evaluate. If you want to tweak, you can change it. But take the step, take the step, keep moving forward. So anything that you want in life, like especially going towards um, building your own business or changing career or um, buying a new house or something, you've got to keep taking the steps and you've got to do it with or without that fear and then you will eventually crash through your terror barrier and into freedom. So... Here are six steps in terms of the action part in the outside world. What can you do, of course, besides visualizing that's in the inside world? What can we do to help protect us or um, overcome self-sabotage? The first one is transform unbelievable goals into believable goals. So sometimes when things are so big, I'll give you my own example. For me, it was, how am I ever going to leave corporate and a safe paycheck every month and work for myself with no safety net. How am I ever gonna, that was an unbelievable goal for me. So turn it into a believable goal. How you do it, break it down into a series of little tiny steps and just take one step at a time. Start doing that thing that you wanna do in some small way every day. If it's writing your book, write a paragraph. If it's, you wanna become, like if I speak for myself, you wanna become a trainer, speaker or coach, Start doing it from where you are today in a small way. Do it with someone who's a friend or people at work or do it for free. Do it at Toastmasters. Just take a step. Chunk down big, enormous projects into small, little, durable manifestations. Be easy on yourself. Just find a few, two or three tiny steps that are going to, in that direction. Just focus on one or two of them. Don't think about the big end goal. It's too big. It's too far away. Also, give yourself a standard of work that allows for very good, very, very good. Just not wasting time on the impossible perfect. Acknowledge your success because this helps to build your confidence. It helps to build your self-worth. Every time you have a little win, if you take one tiny step, acknowledge it. Write it in your gratitude journal. Celebrate it. If you have a small win, let's say it's about weight loss. If you've lost one kilo, Celebrate that success. Well done. You one step in the right direction. Yeah, of course, of course, you might want to lose 10. One is fantastic. You get on the right direction. Two is even better. So keep going. And always keep your eye on the goal. So every day in every way, take some kind of action that will take you towards realizing your success. I put this quote here. This was and still is to this day one of the best ways to help me when I'm stuck, when I'm stuck and afraid and I I'm, feel I'm self-sabotaging, I know I am, especially with procrastination, I just come back to the statement, do what you can with what you've got from where you are. If you're making notes, just take that one. That's brilliant. Do what you can with what you got from where you are. Anything. Just do what you can. You don't have to be the end goal thing overnight. Take a small step. So now, before we get into the meditation, are there any questions on self-sabotage that I can answer for anyone? Anyone? No questions? Mm -hmm. Hey, Welcome. <laughs> no questions at all. Come on. One no. question. No? no? Okay. Well, for yourself, with this in mind, 
thinking about the month of September now, we're going to have a quick guided meditation. What we do in the guided meditation, we just reset the body, reset the mind for the month of September ahead. And set your intention. Think about what it is that you want to focus on for the next month. Tune in to your higher self to get inspiration. You're going to do this in this meditation. You, I'm going to ask you some questions. You're going to get some answers. So if you haven't got it already, just quickly grab yourself a piece of paper and a pen or a pencil so you can take some notes even though you're in meditation. Grab a book, grab a journal. I'll give you a few minutes while I organize the music and then we'll do a quick 15-minute meditation um, to get some answers. And um, just thinking about yourself and your goals and what you really want for yourself. If you know of any of the areas of self-sabotage that you recognize in yourself, even one, it doesn't matter, lack of self-worth, being a perfectionist, always saying no when you're getting solutions or ideas, or you procrastinate. Think about is there anything you can do for the next month ahead or for the next week ahead or the next day even to help you along your journey to get closer to what it is that you want. At the end of the day, life is about you and you. We are the only ones that we have to overcome. It's not other people or other events, other challenges. It's our mind, our perceptions, the way we view the world. Because everything happens to everyone. Good and bad happens to everyone. But everyone responds differently. And how do they respond that's different? It's about their mind, their perception, their resilience, the ability to cope. And it comes from intentional, consistent work on ourselves. Meditating daily, visualizing daily, being aware of your own self-sabotage and taking steps to say, I'm, I'm making a decision. I'm going to change this. It's not going to be easy. It's not easy. It's scary. Every time we change, it's scary. Change is uncomfortable. You're out of your comfort zone. It doesn't feel nice. It's expressed through the body as anxiety. We just want to avoid it because it's much easier being in our comfort zone. But you know what? The comfort zone is the most dangerous place to be because you're actually going backwards in life. You've got to keep breaking through your terror barriers day in and day out, getting towards your goals. And that's where life truly begins. It begins at the end of our comfort zone because we look back and we think, geez, look what I've done. Look how far I've come. And we get closer towards our goals. And of course, it's scary. But once you know you're going to have the fear anyway, you know you're going to have it. Go ahead and do it afraid anyway. That's how we've got to keep going. Okay, so I think you've all got a pen and paper by now. You're going to just relax, close your eyes in the meditation. Um, but whilst you're there with your eyes closed, when it comes to asking the questions towards the very end, when an answer comes to you, write it down. And don't judge it. Don't double question it. Don't guess it. Second guess it. Write down the first thing that comes to mind because that's intuition. And your intuition is never going to guide you wrong. So your first impressions are the ones we're going to go with. Okay, so if you're all ready to go ahead, I'm going to stop the video. And um, you can just relax, sit back, and we'll start this meditation. <clears throat> So have a paper and pen ready. Hold yourself gently in a comfortable position. So right now, just get comfortable. Sit back, relax, close your eyes. Okay, so if you're feeling comfortable right now, just take a deep belly breath into the bottom of your belly. Don't take a breath into your chest. Take a deep belly breath into the bottom of your belly. It's a natural antidote to stress. It'll help you to deeply relax. So take a deep breath in. And as you exhale, allow all the tensions in your body just to release and float away.
Take another deep breath. And as you exhale, just begin to feel your body relaxing. Feel the tension leaving your scalp, your forehead. your eyes, your cheeks, your tongue and jaw. Feel the tension leaving your shoulders, your arms and your hands. Take another deep breath and as you exhale, feel the tension leaving your back. Relax your chest. Relax your stomach and your pelvic area. Take another deep breath and allow the tension to leave your hips, your thighs, your knees, your calves. your feet, all the way down to your toes. Take another deep breath and as you exhale, relax. You are now experiencing a deep state of relaxation. Continue breathing deeply, slowly, and rhythmically. It is a wonderful feeling to be deeply relaxed. You are now going to create in your mind an ideal place of relaxation. It can be real or imagined. Somewhere that you've been or somewhere that you'd like to go. But allow it to be a place where you feel totally relaxed. Begin to experience this place right now and take your time. Now that you have created your ideal place of relaxation, you're going to add a waterfall of white, beautiful light into the scene. Place it wherever you choose. The waterfall is gentle, allowing you to stand under the cascading white light. The light is a healing energy, a clearing energy. 
Your waterfall of white light is now created. Walk over now to the waterfall and stand under the white healing light. Allow the white light to swirl around you and encompass you within its glow. This waterfall of white light, feel it clearing all the stress, all the tension, and the clutter of the day, of the week, of the month, of the year, of the lifetime from your energy field. Feel it clearing the stress, tension and clutter from your atmosphere, from your aura, As the light clears your energy field, notice how much happier you look. Notice the smile on your face. See how the weights that you've been carrying are no longer a burden. Notice how your energy field is expanding and expanding further and further out as you are radiating love. The waterfall of light is always available to you whenever you need it. All you need to do is close your eyes and imagine your ideal place of relaxation and immerse yourself in this white healing light. Now, take a deep breath, relax deeper, and repeat these beneficial statements to yourself mentally. Every day, in every way, I'm getting better, better and better. Repeat mentally after me. Positive thoughts, suggestions and images bring me benefits and advantages I desire. I will always maintain a perfectly healthy body, mind and immune system. The following statements are for your better health. Keep in mind that from now on, I will occasionally be speaking in your place. Every second, every minute, every hour, every day, every cell, tissue, organ, and system of my body is revitalized, restored, and renewed, resulting in a perfectly healthy body mind and immune system. I'm able to function in harmony, physically, mentally, emotionally and spiritually to promote maximum benefits. My awareness in using my mind 
allows me to do activities that promote increased health physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. Now imagine this white light turns to green. You are now immersed in a glowing green light. This green light is unconditional love. It surrounds you. It encompasses you. It flows through your entire being. It fills you with love. All those hurts you felt, all those pains you felt, the angry moments, allow this green light, this unconditional love to heal those spaces now. You are an amazing human being. You deserve love. You deserve joy. You deserve health. You deserve abundance. And you deserve peace. It is now time to step out of the waterfall, step out of the waterfall of light. Your energy field is now clean and clear. You are feeling centered and energized. You are able to think more clearly, focus more easily. You are in the flow, the flow of universal love and energy. Just take a moment to bask in this feeling of connectedness. Enjoy the feeling, the feeling of being in the flow with universal love and energy. You have now reset your body and mind for the month. It is now time to set your intention for the month of September. Tune in to your inner wisdom, your higher self. Know it is there, trust it is there. That part of you that if you tuned in guides you and intuitively knows what is best for you. Feel the alignment with your higher self. Feel the connection. And now ask yourself the following questions. What do I need to focus on for the month of September? Whatever comes to mind, write it down. Then take a deep breath, close your eyes and re-enter your calm state. What do I need to focus on for the month of September? Remember to write down the very first impressions, the things that come to mind in a flash. The next question is, what steps do I need to take to take me closer to what I want to be, 
do or have. Whatever comes to mind, write it down. What steps do I need to take to take me closer to what I want to be, do or have? Whatever comes to mind, write it down. Then take a deep breath and close your eyes and re-enter your calm state. The next question, what do I need to let go of? What do I need to let go of? Write down your first impressions. Whatever comes to mind, write it down and take a deep breath and close your eyes and re-enter your calm state. And lastly, you can ask yourself, is there anything else I need to know? I need to do or I need to change? Anything else? Now allow a deep breath, and as you exhale, relax. Slowly bring your attention back to your body. Gently wiggle your fingers and toes. When you are ready, count yourself out from one to three. Open your eyes and have a big stretch. Blessings to you. Okay, are we all back? Welcome back everyone. How was that for you? Pretty really good. Who's you speaking? Mary. Hello, Mary. How are you? Très bien. How are you? Yeah, it's really good. I really like that. Just 15 minute meditation and setting up the intention for the month. I really like it. Thank you. Did you get some answers? Marie, did, did you get some answers? Yeah, I got some answers. Uh, good. Yeah, it was good and it was, it was easy to go straight to meditation after the weekend. So it just, it's easier, it's becoming easier and easier and easier to go straight to meditation. Uh, yeah. Wow, excellent, great. Anyone else? Want to share anything or want to share what answers they got that maybe were a bit of a surprise to you that you didn't expect? No? 
No? Yes? How did you go, Dave? Dave? How did you go? I don't know if you can hear me. I can't hear you. I can't hear you if you're talking. Okay, anyone else want to share? I'll give you about five minutes to speak and then otherwise I'll move on. You just unmute Hi, yourself. Yeah. If you want to speak, just unmute yourself. I'll unmute your, you guys anyway, but you can unmute yourselves. Oops. Can you hear me, Janine? Yes, who's speaking? Lynn. Hi, Lynn. Go ahead. Hi. Hi. I'm good. No, that was fabulous. Um, I, I definitely agree with Marie. Um, just coming out of the, the weekend, the meditations are still really strong, um, you know, and deep. So I love, I love the, um, I'm looking forward to the month ahead. Got, got some answers. So that's great. Thank, Thank you. you. Great. Just for the other people who might not know what they're saying about the weekend on the weekend, we did the silver method life training. So Marie and Lynn who just spoke now were in the silver method on Saturday and Sunday doing um, the life systems first two days. And we catch up in two weeks time for intuition training. Great. I'm glad to hear that it's so easy to go into meditation from all the practicing. Because when you go deep and you get mm. answers, you can absolutely trust them. And um, I don't know, Lynn, did you find the answers a little bit, um, not, not exactly a surprise, but a little bit like, wow, okay, it came from somewhere else kind of feeling. Yeah, yeah. Um, you keep dropping out a little bit there, so you, I'm, I'm not... Um... Can you hear me okay? I can hear you okay. I'll just, I'll just say that again. Did you find any of the answers a little bit surprising or different to what your conscious mind would have thought up? Um, no, definitely um, because they were very fast. So um, faster than my mind works. <laughs> so you captured your first impressions. Is that what you're saying, Lynn? It was your first impressions. They were fast. Yeah, yes, they were very fast, yeah. Okay, so yeah. just for everyone's yeah. um, benefit, that's intuition. When you ask these questions in a deep state of meditation, you've got access to your subconscious mind. It's a completely different environment to your conscious mind thinking. And when you get those quick answers, you absolutely can trust them. They'll never lead you wrong. You can absolutely trust them. Anybody else want to share? No? Okay. So just to tell you what's on for next time. So next month's Meaningful Monday is going to be about the power within. And when I talk about the power within, I'm talking about... Um, Finding that freedom in your life, in any area of your life, when we, the, the difference between feeling trapped and feeling free has to do with the awareness and, the, and being conscious of the power within yourself. So I'm going to be talking about the power within so you can understand what that means, where it comes from, and the attitude that we need to adopt throughout any event in our life to make sure that we don't feel that we're stuck, that we're trapped, that we're victims, that life is happening to us, all of that. So really, the more you connect with the power within you, basically, the more you can be set free from any area of your life, no matter what's happening. That's on the 2nd of October. That is a public holiday in Australia. So if anyone is not happy with the 2nd of October, send me an SMS or an email to let me know. If you don't contact me, it will be on the 2nd of October. Um, so I hope you can all make it. It is um, the Queen's birthday, whatever holiday. Okay, so the next event is just the four key skills for taking charge of your life. For those of you who may not have seen it before, it is based on the Silver Method. It's on the 21st of September at 7.30. It's about an hour and 15 minutes. And the four key skills are how do we stay calm and focused even under pressure? 
How do we have clear, meaningful goals and achieve them quicker? How do we overcome self-limiting beliefs? Because that's all that's standing in between where you are today and where you want to be. There's nothing else to it. It's as simple as that. Where you are now, where you want to be, the gap in between is overcoming self-limiting beliefs. I mean, if you haven't got there ready, if it's like an intention you've had for a while. And then lastly, how to make smarter decisions and recognize opportunities for yourselves. And that's really about intuition and creativity. So that'll be a Zoom one as well. And then also just to let you all know, the next Silver Method Live training is going to be a four-day immersion, not two days gap, two days. It's four days in a row from the 16th to the 19th of November. So if you've got friends, family, or people that you want to maybe introduce to Silver, I suggest they come to the Four Key Skills free webinar so you can get a taste of what it's about and a deeper understanding um, for people who might not be sure. Okay, so guys, that's really it from me. Um, thank you very much. If you have any questions, I'm going to stay on the line till everyone's left. If you want to say anything, a comment, a question, I'm here. Otherwise, good night. God bless. Thank you for being with me. I've enjoyed the time with you. And um, I'll stop the recording now for the people who want um, to receive this, but I'll still stay on the line.